Blog Talk Radio. Yo, Bantan. ¿Cuál es la palancho? ¿Qué es lo que está sonando por ahí? Acabo de llegar a mi país. El mismo rintón, pero desde otro Nokia Enredando a la gente con esa basofia Así que flow de paquete en directo de Copia, 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 copia A mí no me interesa De dónde es tu flow, así que deja la pereza Y Ay, mamá, a escribir que eso eh, de tristeza champion. A estas alturas eh, que estar en la pura copia y... Alright, welcome to the latest edition of the Jeff Mayweather Radio Show. My name is Jody, and of course, as always, I am uh, joined by uh, the guy the show's named after. Jeff, how you doing tonight, buddy? I'm, I'm good, and yourself? What are you laughing for? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, 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 it's both our show. It's a what show? Oh, it's, yeah, well, it's just named I, after you, though, you know, I got to... No, no, no one's tuning in to see the Jody Cohn show. Fun. So, we're equal <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, you know, hey, we normally we talk and, and chat a little about what's going on, but uh, we're going to skip all that tonight. We have a big show tonight. We got two guests um, in a little while. We have Art Jimerson coming on, who was a <laughs> former heavyweight boxer, uh, best known for his time in the UFC. <laughs> but first, let's bring on a guy who's got a big fight coming up here in uh, uh, in August, August 11th, against Sergio Mora. Um, a guy that you know a little bit, Jeff. You've worked with him a little before. Um, you know, without further ado, let's bring him on. Is uh, Brian Vera. Brian, how you doing tonight, buddy? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Uh, th- thank both of you for uh, having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, you know, first before thank we get you. to you, let's talk a little bit about you know a fight that you, you this happened this past weekend. Uh, Andy Lee and um, and uh, who right. is our Chavez? Chavez, you were uh, working with Andy, right, on that fight? Yeah, I went down there for uh, three and a half weeks to to spar with him uh, to to help him get ready. Me and me and Evan Rodriguez. So, so what yeah, did you think so of the cool. fight? How it went? I mean, did you, you know you'd worked with Andy, you fought him before. Did you know going in? Did you think he had a good chance of winning the fight? And did it play out? You know, how did it play out according to what you, you know compared to what you thought it would? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think he did good, did good at the beginning, but uh, I don't know. We were talking about it in, in the camp when we were in camp with him. He you know, he was he wasn't sparring like maybe six, seven rounds at a time. I don't think he ever sparred a full twelve rounds. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say he, he didn't uh, try as hard as like as far as training camp, but it just seemed like they maybe should have pushed him a little harder. And uh, and uh, you, he he kind of faded towards the seven, you know, six, seven round. But uh, Tyler's is a big, strong guy, man. So with a guy like that, you got to better push him back a little bit too. I think, but I don't know. I, I think that, that you know, Tyler Tyler is just too strong for him. Uh, Jeff, you know, you heard what uh, Brian just said. What did you think about, you know, and I know you're a real stickler for people being in shape and, you know, really pushing themselves. You know, I know, like, for example, Roy Nelson, you, you know, you trained him as if he was a smaller fighter. So, you know, knowing what we just heard, I mean, what would you have done with, with Lee to get him prepared for the fight as far as, you know, sparring and that kind of thing? Well, I mean, I mean, of course, I wasn't there, so I don't really know exactly what he did in camp or whatever. But um, I think that one thing that he did wrong was the fact that he got away from the plan. The game plan was to box, and when he was boxing, he was doing great. And once he started sitting down and, and you know, staying on the ropes, um, of course, Chavez took advantage because he's the biggest, stronger guy. Brian, what did you think as far as, uh, you know, if, if the situation were, were happening to you with Chavez, there's a lot made that, you know, with the, the gloves not being weighed, and then also the the failure of, a, of or the uh, child well, not having to take a drug test. Um, if, if you know if that was you, how how would you react to that? And what do you think about him being away with that? You know, you're from Texas, so you're familiar with how things work down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, we, they, they tell you to get a bad rap, you know, because because of things like that. But uh, I would have been frustrated too. You know, what I mean, I, did, did, he didn't do the drug test either. I thought maybe he did, but I, I guess he didn't do that either, did he? He, uh, he didn't do last it right. he yeah, see that? I don't know. I'm sure. Je- I'm sure Jeff would say the same thing. I'm always let. I definitely wouldn't let that 
pass, you know what I mean? Uh, I think Amanda Stewart's trying to do something about that right now, but that's the second time he's done that, so I mean, obviously there's something up with yeah. it, you know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, it's the second time a guy has, you know, has, you know, and I mean, like you said, I mean, he just takes a, a horrible rap because not just yeah. him. I mean, um, James Kirkman did it the, the fight previous. He said, no, I'm not taking no test. And then he, and then he sure. said, that, oh, well, I'll take the test after the fight's over with. But it doesn't matter if you take it when the fight's over with because you need to be able to take it before you even the fight even proceeds. But I mean, right. of course, no one knows what happened after that. So I mean, I mean, it's a it's a horrible, horrible rep, you know, for for Texas because it seems like they let anything go, you know, just because a guy has a, has a name, you know, I mean, he can get away with anything. Yeah, and then you know yeah. he's got he's real he got a good relationship with that that uh, with Jose Suleiman and those guys. So I think you know they treat him like he, they treat him like he, like like it's his own kid. So they they kind of let Chavez get away with pretty much everything, which is which is not right, you know. You know, I want to uh, for stranger I mean, to me. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, Joey. I was say what's even stranger to me is that the uh, the situation with the gloves, I mean, you know, we can speculate whether or not, he, you know, he was taking something, and that's why he wouldn't get tested. But, you know, unless you are blatantly are cheating, why in the world, you know, and you guys might know this better than me, why would you not just slap your gloves up there on a scale and let them be weighed? Yeah, it don't make, it just don't make sense to me, really. I mean, that's a, that's a small thing. I don't... I don't know. They're just trying to be arrogant and, and, and assholes about it, like Freddie Roach and them. But I would think, I would think they would just do it unless you know they're trying to hide something. It just seems a little fishy to me. But I mean, I really don't know. Yeah, it just there's too yeah. many red flags. I mean, there's too many red flags, and actually, all it does is it, it taints the victory. I mean, maybe he would have beat, um, you know, Andy Lee with with none of this, none of this stuff that was speculating. But at the same right. time. I mean, they've left the they've left the door wide open for anybody to take pot shots at them, because I mean, I mean, boxing like anything else. I mean, it does have rules, and I mean, and yep. part of the rules is you know, especially for a guy that's already been busted on PED, you know, I mean, he should mandatorily be taking a test before anybody. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, the state itself should mandate that he takes a test. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Look you look you look at him and his brother, they look like uh you know, they look like damn they look like bodybuilders when they walk out there before they didn't have no, no muscle, no nothing. It just I mean, right. I'm not saying they are I'm not so, saying they are so sure, quickly. but it just looks funny to me. Yeah. No, but it happened it happened so quickly. I mean he there was a time exactly. when he was a guy that really couldn't punch. You know, he was a guy that nobody thought had a chance of doing anything. But now, all of a sudden, I mean, people are saying that, well, this guy might be my kid now. You know, I mean, no one in the world gave him a chance against Martinez. You know, and I mean, and, and, and like I said, one thing, one, one thing is this: when you don't have nothing to hide, you're bold about proving it because you want the whole world to appreciate your mm-hmm. appreciate your talent and what you have. But when you have all these all these smoke screens, all these these red flags popping up here, there, and so on and so forth, I mean, everything is in question. So. You know, I mean, I don't know what to, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to believe. But I mean, if I was Manuel Stewart, I would do the exact same thing. Yeah, I would. So I talked. I talked to him the other day, and he, he, you know, he wasn't happy with the whole situation. But you know, he also said he also said what you said. He said that you know, Andy didn't stick to the game plan. But you know, it just just the way it went. But I, he I, he did say that that he wants to get he wants to do the drug drug thing, and get it all squared away because he. You know, it, it, you're trying to make it a fair fight in there, you know. Well, now, Brian, you, I mean, you probably you Andy. So many other guys. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to just change a little bit there. Uh, Brian, you, you fought Andy Lee, you know, twice, obviously, uh, splitting with him. Um, you know, as far as yeah. the fighter, uh, you, you know, did you find it easy? Uh, or, I mean, how he was in the ring, was it easy? Did you have a hard, tough time throwing him off his game plan? You, did you think that he was, you know, what was his shape, you know, as far as him being in shape and, you know, and, yeah. and how he was to work with him there? Well, the second time, like the second time I fought him, I, I think we just went in there with the, with the, with, the, with trying to box him and trick him instead of just, I should have just did, the thing, did uh, somewhat what I did the first time and, and kind of be a bully to him and be aggressive. That's kind of what I did for sparring because they wanted me to come at him and, you know, it, it was kind of, I was successful when I was born him too, so I just never got away with doing it and trying to, you know, but it was a learning experience. But, uh, 
Uh, if I were to change, if I were going to change it, I definitely would have just came at him kind of like Charlie did, and just kind of kind of bully him a little bit, make make him fight, make him fight you fight. Well, now you got another guy that's want. You know, seems like everybody wants to avenge themselves against you. So you're coming up in August 11th. Uh, you're gonna have a, you know, you're gonna right. have a rematch against Sergio Mora, who uh, you beat in a split decision the first time. Um, you know, you're gonna be an underdog again going into this fight. Uh, yeah. What What do you you know? What's the plan as far as you know repeating your past success? Uh, you know, just, I'm I'm gonna go down in Houston again for like seven weeks, just just try to get in the best shape I can. And, uh, and just be the aggressor, you know. He's not a big puncher, and he just, you know, he likes to be flashy and do and do that type of thing. But I kind of just want we, we kind of want to do the same thing we did the first time, but maybe be a little, maybe be a little more aggressive. And uh, and uh, after the press conference, I want I want to knock his ass out now. You know, he's talking he's talking a lot of shit, but <laughs> no, let's we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, give us a little recap on what went on the press conference. Nah, he's just talking about how. You know, of course, he was talking about Shane Mosley. He got that he beat Shane Mosley, and then he was that uh, that I was a dirty fighter, and that, that he was gonna knock me out this time. And you know, he, I'm not big on running my mouth, so I just kind of he kind of he pushed my butt, so I kind of got up there and started started talking shit back a little bit. But just just let him know that uh, he, he got to have my respect. But uh, he is one of those guys, man. That you know, he he uh, he he's a kind of a bad sport. He just kind of you know hard headed a little bit, but we'll. We'll see when we get back. When we get back in that thing in, in the ring, you know, it's gonna. That, that's when it all counts. Uh, Jeff, uh, you know, you've been you've trained a ton of people and been been involved in a lot of the the press conferences like that. How, you know, you can see Brian got a little upset with you know the way Moore acted. <laughs> How important is the gamesmanship involved? Game, gamesmanship, excuse me, uh, you know, that's involved in these press conferences, and you know, and is it effective if you know you can throw someone off your game plan? I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, sometimes. Sometimes you can because, you know, um, I mean, Mike Tyson was a master at doing it. I mean, Floyd is a master at doing it. And, you know, you have certain fighters that can actually, once they get a fighter to act as though they haven't, that means that, you know, you got them. You, at least you got their attention and you woke them up. But at the same time, sometimes it can backfire. Sometimes you can wake up a sleeping lion, and that lion is going to have the, the biggest roar ever, you know, when you get in the ring because you pissed him off. So, I mean, it can, it can work both ways, you know. So, and I, I mean, think that kind of depends like, on the style of the fighter. You know, you have, you know, someone like Brian here is not necessarily, you know, he's not a slick boxer. He's more of a, you know, he's going to go in there and just throw leather. So, you know, someone in his style, I think it's maybe more conducive for him to be angry than to be calm and collected. I mean, I mean, I think that I think that Brian's gonna, you know, Brian's gonna be Brian. And I think the the one thing that, and that's the most important thing. I mean, because if you beat the guy once, you know, I mean, you obviously you can beat him again. You know, you, like he said, he wants to use the, probably the same approach, but just be a little more aggressive. And and probably in being more aggressive, I mean, chances are he probably he probably you know got a good chance of, of stopping the guy, but. You know, um, but it's also one of those things that he can't go in there hot-headed and just, you know, basically just, you know, with his mind set on just knocking the guy out. He got to just let it happen because a lot of times when you when you think knockout, a lot of times you start running into punches and things like that that normally because you only thing you're, you're worried about is I got to land this shot, I got to land this shot, and you're not really, the game plan is kind of gone. So he still got to be, Brian still has to be focused, he still got to be smart. And you know he still got to got to come in there with a game plan. Okay. Yeah. Now, Brian, you're uh, you're 30 years old. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. So you're 30. You're you know you're you're just on the outside looking in. You know of the of the real top tier big name fighters there. Yeah. Uh, you know this this is a fight that's really going to give you an opportunity to do that. So, I mean, you know, what are you trying to you know what kind of statement are you trying to make in this fight? I mean, you know, this is this is your time. So so you know, a great performance here. What's it going to do for you in your career? I mean, just, just like what uh, at the press conference, I was still always talking about, like, you know, for both of us, we're both kind of, we both need this win to get to get that next step, you know, maybe like a, uh, you know, like Chavez or any of them guys, you know, of course he's fighting Martinez, but, um, you know, we get we get a win here and they take care of you, they give you another fight, maybe maybe not just a hard fight, but, you know, get another win, and, they, and they, they're one of the, they're, I think they're going to try to build up whoever wins this fight, which, which I, I think is going to be me, but at the same time, it's like, uh, 
Yeah. We're kind of both there at crossroads right now. We both have to have this win. Uh, I, definitely, I definitely can't afford a loss. I know he can't either. So uh, I think that's going to make for a good fight, and, and, and both are going to be hungry and ready. And now, now explain this your training situation. I know not too long ago you, you changed trainers. So, yeah. so, so explain this the change in trainers and, and you know and, and what the new camp yeah. you know what what you're learning there and the, and the differences between that and you know what you went through before. Well, like oh, you know the first one with Andy Lee's rematch, uh, I got with a guy in Austin that has been training uh, fighters for a long time, but he got, he actually had medical problems. He had, he had uh, problems breathing. He went to the doctor, so he, he can't even train fighter anymore. So. Like I went up to Vegas and worked with Jeff. I mean, you know, I, that, that would be a great, a great mix too, because I know he's he's a great trainer as well. But the situation here, I, we already have many commitment with Ronnie Shields. We kind of, kind of fell in that place. But uh, you know, the main thing over here in Houston is uh, there's always boxing. There's good boxing. There's, there's uh, you got all the ba all the great sparring that, that you need. And and, uh, and then Ronnie Ronnie knows his game, so it's uh, it's a it's a way better camp than what I have in Austin because there ain't. You got James Kirkland, but that, that's about it. And uh, you know, you're not gonna get any better by by just you know beating people up and then not having somebody get in your ass and make you work, you know. And so, how is your your game, you know, evolving, you know, within the camp? Then, what new things are you learning? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I did good. I only spent four weeks over there the first time, and I came back home, and I'm about to go back uh, uh, for seven weeks. So. You know, I just I think the sky's the limit right now. I, I started boxing late, so it's kind of I'm still learning. You know, I'm still I'm still trying to pick up this game. You know, I'm still trying to trying to figure out a lot of things and find my style. Uh, right now, I'm just more aggressive and just try to come at you and and, and things like that. But uh, I think I'm more athletic than than what I show, and and hopefully I can bring that out in, in one of these fights. Now, Jeff, you, know, you, you actually were you you didn't actually know Brian before you worked with him. Uh, you, was it January or December you were out here? What month was that? Yeah, I want. What was it? I want to say it was, it was when Mo. It was when Mo fought. Yeah, I think. I, I think that was December, wasn't it? I don't know. Well, you, well, you came I out here no and idea. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you had to work with Brian. Um, you know, what did you think of him? You know, I mean, in a little bit of time, you you you, you spent with him as far as the skills in the ring. No, I thought I think that Brian was just like you said. I mean, I think that. You know, he's a very athletic guy, and he's probably a, a whole lot better than he, you know, that he's showing because of the fact that someone has to bring it out of him, you know. And, um, sure. and I mean, he, he he caught on, you know, really quick. I mean, he's a very quick learner, and, he, and he's also a student of the game. So, I mean, it was a pleasure working with him for that short time. And even in that short time, I thought he had, you know, potential not just being a slugger, but also – being, you know, a good technical boxer if he, if he chose to. Right. And Brian, that. how important is it, you know, I mean, I know we all think we can go out there and, you know, beat anybody's ass, but how important is the right trainer to you to get, you know, everything possible out of your talents? You know, I've had, I've had this, is my, this is my, you know, fourth trainer, so to me it's like, uh, it's all about with the respect, like like Jeff, I don't know if I stay trade with him, it'd be the same thing that he, He's already uh, established himself, and, and everybody knows who he is. So it's like you can't do nothing but respect him. So you, that's gonna make you get better. Just like Ronnie, you know, I I got put in a situation, and uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask no questions. I'm just gonna go to work and and, and believe in everything he says. Just like I will with Jeff. You know, I know what he's telling me it makes sense. I know it's not gonna be no, you know, just tell me just to, just to talk. You know, I, everything he says is gonna make sense, and it's, it's up to me to to you know to, to stick with it and learn. So and then, then um, as far as uh, I mean, do you think you know having gone through four trainers, do you think that's kind of cost you a little bit as far as you know where you could have been at this point in your career? No, I mean I just don't want to say that because because cause I have you know I'm respecting, but at the same time it's like the the first guy I had a Cuban at, at here for all of him for five, for five years, and when I went on the contender, uh, the contender show when I got off our our contract ended, and it was more of that of that situation where he. You know they wanted they wanted to extend the contract for for way too long, man. And I I didn't want to kick, uh, put myself in that situation where I was stuck. And I, and that's all that was. It wasn't that he was a bad trainer. I think it was more of the fact that uh, business a business situation. And then you know this guy got hurt. So it, I think everything happens for a reason, though, man. I got to keep on going. And uh, when when this all ends, it all ends, you know. 
Well, you know, it's not even being you know disrespectful. Sometimes if you just if you go from training to training, you had four of them. You know, it's just the continuity yep. doesn't get a chance to build up. You know, you can you know it's just like Jeff. You can probably yep. test for this. You know, as each fight goes on, you know your you know uh, your uh, compatibility and in, in, in how well you know your fighter is going to increase with each fight. Right. I mean, Jeff. You know, I mean, I mean, how you know how about you at Celestino? I mean, you know, you, like I said, that's that's mm-hmm. one they've able to see as you go along. How does the uh, you know to the, the bond between the fighter work as, as they go along more and more fights? Well, I mean, basically, me, myself, personally, some trainers keep, you know, keep it strictly business, you know, and that and when I say that, that means I'm, I'm your trainer at the gym, that's it. Once I leave the gym, you go your way, and you go your way. But me as a trainer, I'm not that way. I mean, I have a, I have a, a genuine relationship with all my fighters. I mean... I hang out with them, I do things with them, you know, I'm there for them if they need me for anything. So, I mean, and, and I think that that's more important a lot of times than I wouldn't say necessarily your ability to train, of course, because you should be a good trainer. But the one thing is this is that, I mean, you got to get actually get a chance to know a person and know what makes them tick, know when they're having a bad day, know that, you know, that know if there's something negative going on in their life and that's going to affect them that day or anything like that. Because if you don't get a chance to know the fighter, you know, as a person, you really don't know him. You know, that's basically, you just have a person that you come into the gym, y'all do your business, he go home, he go home. And, I mean, you never know. I mean, he comes to the gym one day, he just, he feels like shit. You know, it's, um, you know, it may be something happened with his woman or anything. Anything could happen. And it shows in his training. But just because you're the trainer, you just go through the process of training and you never even know what's really going on with this person. And that and this can probably even this and this can probably even carry into the fight. So, I mean, you actually need to know. As a trainer, I think that it's imperative to get to know that person. You know, and get to know their personality, get to know, you know, the the things that make them tick, the things that, you know, when you say do this, that that person is gonna you know, they're gonna respond to it in a positive way. I mean there's so much more to just being a trainer than just you know, holding holding minutes and telling the person what to do. It's, it's so much more. Now, now, Brian, you you know, you you fought some of the bigger names. You beat Andy Lee. You beat Sergio Moore in the first fight. Um, but you know, for some reason, you're always like the other guy in the fight. Um, so, so going back in here with Moore, who's who's got the bigger name, is this really you know? Do you look at this really as a chance to make a statement? Even like, so even though you beat him once, is this really your opportunity to you know say, hey, you know, I'm here too and 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 really, you know, throw your name into the, the mix for the upcoming fights. I think so. I think I think it's more. I think this is a bigger opportunity than it was even for the first fight because uh, the first the first fight was just it was every, everybody knew that I was going to fight Andy Lee. You know, if I if I beat Sergio Moore, so I just think there's a lot more do- doors are going to open up this time. Uh, you know, Sergio Moore. Sergio Moore still got a pretty big name where where I think it, you know it makes it, it makes sense to do the rematch now. I think he's been wanting to do it, but. You know, before I don't think it made it made as, as much sense as uh, as it does now. So I think so, man. You know, he he's acting like he's confident and everything like that, but uh, he knows he's gonna be in a fight when you know when the bell rings. He knows he's gonna be in a dog fight, and it's uh, hopefully I can I can show the people a different look and a little bit. Or, you know, you know, it's just just the fact that everybody knows that I come to fight, but I kind of want them to you know not to always just be like he's he's a brawler and he just want to bang. You know, they'd be able to move his head and slip and do things that, that I wouldn't I wouldn't show him before. And then back 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 to what Jeff was saying, you know, like he was talking about you can you can lose your cool and everything. That's what that's what happened to me when I was on contender. I, me and Jay, me and Jay Don Connerson were getting into it and uh shit I couldn't even see the night before I was so mad, man. And I come out there and, and try to knock him out with with one punch and he knocked me out of the second round. So it, you know, I know that's why because it made you know, it, you, I let it get to my head and I go in there and I and, and I don't even remember the fight really. That's how bad it was, man. So, uh, what, what he's what he's saying made perfect sense. Now, Jeff, you know, you know what you just said a minute ago, you know, by having a bond with the fighters, you know, and and some of you have, you know, Felon he he can be you know, hot headed at times. So, so how important is that for you to recognize, you know, someone like Brian's, you know, like so mad they can't, you know, see straight, and and you know, get them back, you know, focusing on what they should be doing. Oh yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean. Me and Celestino, I mean, it's almost like, you know, um, I mean, he has a he has a great deal of respect for me, and I have a great deal of respect for him. 
as well. And, you know, he values he values my opinion. And he knows that I go to bat I go to bat for him, you know, as need be in, in, in any situation. And so I you know, just like, you know, sometimes, you know, Celestine, like you said, I mean, of course at, of course I'm not gonna say no name but, you know, there's a person that actually just pisses him off and it's almost like he can get pissed off at just the sound of the name. So it's one of those situations when, you know, when it comes to that, I just try to take his mind off of that and just focus on what we need to do. That, you know, and like I told him, I said, you're a promoter yourself. You got to learn, you got to learn how to be, you know, a person that don't get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in a situation. The situation is going to work itself out, you know, and basically, and of course, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, most of the time he's always, he cools out and, you know, and, and he, he's actually fine afterwards. And then I can't say he's fine for a long time, but sometimes he'll get right back to it. And then, you know, and then also I have a lot of times I'll call Miguel because Miguel can calm him down as well. So I'm glad I have a person that can actually talk to him just like I can. And now that he's hearing it from me and he's hearing it from somebody else, then he understands it, you know, a lot more and then basically calms himself down. Hey, so Brian, you know, we just got a couple minutes left here, and we got Art Jimerson coming on to the second. Um, so, so how was that? You know, you, you said you lost your cool there in, in the contender, so now you're a little older. So, so what do you think? You know, have you been able to control your emotions as you've gotten older? You know, is Mora, you know, yeah. you know, you sitting at him at the press conference, that's one thing, but you know, any chance that you carry that in the ring with you, or you know, use it to your advantage, or does uh, this work as a detriment to you? I just think, you know, now, like you said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more experienced now, and it's like. Uh, in my eyes, I just look at it as, as he didn't do this the first time. He's real respectful, so I think I think he's going there already beat. You know, I think he he is like a mechanism where he's scared. I think, man, he's trying to he's trying to hype himself up. It seemed like to me, and you know, I just look at it like that. I'm not even I'm not even letting it get into. It. I, I know at the end of the day, I got to go get ready and uh, and train the best I can for for the seven eight weeks that I'm uh, that I'm gonna be training. And uh, I'm not even really worried about it, man. To be honest with you, I just. You know, it makes me, it does make me it mad at the time, just for a minute. But uh, I wouldn't try to throw no bows at him, nothing like that. I wouldn't try to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mad enough to want to, like, push him and knock him out or anything. I was just like, whatever, you know, it just, I, I felt like I was beating him mentally, really. All right, well, we're looking forward to that. Like I said, he beat him the first That's time, it. so uh, hopefully he'll take care of business again. That's August 11th down there in uh, San Antonio. Um, yes, Brian, sir. really appreciate it. Uh, you know, tell the folks where they can follow you on Twitter, websites, anything like that. Yeah, you can follow me on uh, BV Warrior uh, on Twitter, and then I got uh, for you know Brian Vera on Facebook. Uh, and thank y'all for having me, man. Uh, uh, Jeff, it was a pleasure talking to you. You too, Jody, man. Uh, y'all always been good to me, so uh, thank you. Yeah, it's great. Well, I have to get you back ap after you uh, after your victory. Yes, sir, man. Thank y'all. All right, All thanks. Right. Uh, that was right. that was Brian Vera. Appreciate his time. Uh, all right, well, we're uh, going to go right from, we're going to keep it rolling here. We're going to go uh, from one guest right to another. Our next guest um, is also a boxer, and he's probably most known for his uh, his uh, time in, in UFC, and then in the original UFC, UFC 1, and that's uh, Art Jimerson. Uh, Art, you there? Welcome to the show. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm doing great. Appreciate you joining us. No problem, no problem. All right, so we understand you're, you're training out there in, uh, in California at the UFC gym now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, I'm a trainer out at uh, both gyms, the one over in Rosemead, also the one in uh, Torrance. So that's, that's pretty impressive. I, I, I bet you had no idea going to the first UFC that that would end up actually being kind of your uh, long-term employer, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm still kind of, uh, you know, dazed by it. It's kind of funny because, like I say, looking back at, um, you know, how everything originated, and then for me to be a part of the, um, you know, a part of the the, uh, the company, it's pretty cool. Well, one thing you might not know, uh, not many people know yet. We did a, uh, and I'm sorry, you know, you got Jeff Jeff Mayweather's on the show here with us. Um, we had did a video a week ago, and uh, kind of like a spoof video where Jeff was coming out of his retirement, he's going to fight, and he ends up fighting Roy Nelson in his uh in his debut MMA fight that we had. And, uh, as a tribute to you, we kind of had, we had Jeff have the one boxing glove on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, 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 Jeff, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, I'm good. Yourself? I'm great. 
So, you know, the one thing you guys definitely have in common, you know, you're both working with MMA fighters now that are, uh, you know, that, you know, they're working in their boxing. Jeff's worked with, you know, Roy Nelson, we just said. He's worked with King Mo, um, works with Danny Castillo, uh, TJ Dillashaw, um, who also has Jeff worked with Vitor a little bit. So, you know, I'd like to get you guys, you know, your, you know, since you're both trainers, um, you know, what, what you guys think is, is the difference in between training the MMA guys as far as the boxers? So we'll start with you, Art. You know, the, what kind of difference did you see there? Well, uh, of course, um, you know, being a fighter, uh, especially, you know, since I was 14, I think that, uh, you know, of course, I have more knowledge for the upper body, you know. The one thing I did lack as a uh, MMA fighter, I, I didn't know what, what it meant. I mean, I first got into it, uh, nobody even, you know, basically told me about it. So I went in blast at it. I mean, I ended up fighting Hoist Gracie, you know, out of all people. So, um you know, when I first got into it, uh, they tried to show me a couple of things, you know, about little about sprawling, then about, you know, certain holes. So um, what I did know how to do was punch, though. So knowing how to punch, um, that, was, that was my leverage. But, again, you can't punch if you're on the ground. So I wasn't able to, uh, you know, capitalize on that. But right now I'm working with the five and four, you know, basically jab, how to turn, turn, turn their power into their punches. Basically, you know, how to roll and move. You do a lot of boxing techniques that uh, a lot of them are made by the black. Yeah, let's, let's kind of, I guess we'll start at the beginning and kind of get to the present there. Um, you know, like I said, you, you know, other than Hoyce Gracie, you, <laughs> you're one of the, the biggest names to come out of the first UFC, and it was because of the one-glove thing. Um, you know, I know you've told the story many times. Just for those, you know, it's probably more on the, on the MMA side. So for our boxing listeners, how did that all come about with, with wearing the one glove? And, and are you really happy with, you know, the way you've been portrayed? Because you had, you know, you know, a really distinguished boxing career, but yet, you know, you're, you're, you're more known for the UFC thing. Yeah, uh, well, again, let's say give glory to God. I am a, a born-again Christian. I want to say that uh, with the UFC thing, I was uh, scheduled to fight Tom Turner for a world title fight. I was ranked in the top ten at uh, light heavyweight. So uh, at the time, uh, I hadn't lost in five years. So they wanted a legitimate boxer. So when they found me, uh, they offered me to fight at first, and I, I, I verbally agreed. And my attorneys at the time, uh, we all did it together as a group. But then uh, I, when I found out how barbaric it was, I tried to pull out of it. And they wouldn't. They say, you know, they had me a verbal contract. So they end up upping the money a little more. They say, you know, well, we'll go ahead and give you a larger lending uh, insurance. So I was okay with that. But, again, going to it, it was just like, uh, like I said, it was like um, it was, a, it was like being a new driver on a 4 or 5 highway. I mean, I, I, did, I knew nothing what I was doing. So I got in there. And, you know, and, and all, all respect to Royce, I think he's a great guy. I think he's a great fighter. But I think, you know, if I had – Sometimes I'm knowledge about you know how to go in there and do something different. I think I would be a lot better. He said, um, you know, he came at me kicking at me. I never saw anybody kick at me, you know, at, at, at that point. So by him kicking at me, he threw my whole game off. So uh, I just try to you know uh, dance a, a lateral. And again, like I said, I just didn't, I just didn't have the the knowledge. And the one good thing came on because uh, I was get, I was getting ready to fight Tommy Hearns at the time. I didn't want to uh, hurt my hand, you know, hit him. But I figured if, I, if I'm not going out guys with, 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 with 10 hours gloves on, I'm going to break my hand, hit him in the face with no, with no gloves on. Now, Jeff, uh, I, I, I assume, you, did you watch any of the early UFCs, Jeff? No. <laughs> you, I didn't you, watch you. <laughs> So, so, so now, Jeff, you were obviously you were the total anti MMA MMA guy. Um, you know, now you've had a chance to work some of these guys a little bit. You know, how, how have your thoughts on the sport changed? And I think you are too, Art, because I, I know you're a boxer first. So, you know, and obviously you're involved a little bit now. So, what you know, what do you guys think as far as is you you know not UFC but you know, MMA in general? Um, you know, compared to boxing. I mean, I've, I've come to appreciate it now. I've, I've come to appreciate the fact that. You know, it's not just you know, it's not just one art form that you have to learn. You gotta learn you just who you gotta learn how to grapple, you gotta you know, and you gotta learn how to strike. So I mean, you know, to me, you know, I mean, I think that that's you know, that's a lot that's a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of work and, and also, you know, um actually getting a chance to be close to the ring and actually see and you know, a guy get hit with those small gloves like that in the face. It's kind of like I have a different respect for it, you know, but it's it's kind of like I have a different respect for it because, I mean, I still look at it as a form of, you know, it's a combat sport, and so I respect it in that, in that same sense. But I think that, you know, I mean, like people think boxing is 
It's crazy. Now, when I look at this, me as a boxer, I think this is crazy. But but I can't respect it because I know that they're they're well trained athletes and they're not just going out there just you know, just street fighting. I mean they're actually you know, they're fighting with our form. And uh our you know, as far as you know, you were an active boxer, you know, around the same time the Mayweather brothers were all were all working uh, in the ring. Uh what did you think of them? I mean putting you on the spot a little bit with Jeff here on the radio, but did you follow them at all and what did you think of them as fighters? Yeah, well, you know what? I agree with Jeff. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that, um, you know, I mean, boxing is my first love. You know, I've been doing it since I was 14. Uh, MMA, you know, they call it the ultimate fighter. That's exactly what it is. It's the ultimate fighter because you're using more than just, you know, boxing, using groundwork. I, I've learned to respect it because, I mean, to me, these guys are awesome. Man. I mean, besides being around the gym, seeing these guys go to work, I mean, the moves they're doing because, you know, it's an art. And uh, I've grown to become a fan. I mean, a big fan of the sport. And it's like, when the big fights come on, I love to watch it because, like I said, a guy can be in, in one position and before you know it, he can turn around and he, he's out, you know. I learned that from Hoyt, you know, uh, after watching him. And uh, you know, even getting a chance to, you know, uh, over the last few months, get a chance to hang out with him a little bit. I learned to respect him because, like I said, you know, it's not about how small you are or how, how much power you have. It's, it's all about, you know, uh, um, capitalizing your strengths, you know what I'm saying? So they said, you know, when you get guy on the ground, it's like, that's, that's, that's the game right there. So I've learned to become a big fan of it because it is the ultimate fighter. I mean, for us, you know, using your whole body, you know what I'm saying? But, again, my first love is boxing, but I've learned to appreciate the sport because uh, they use their whole body. Well, what is the, uh, you know, you were calling out Hoist there for a while on Facebook. I you know you you'd wanted the rematch. Um, you know, nothing ever came to that as far as I know of. But, you know, Hoist, he was just, you know, in the she was here lately saying he'd get back in the UFC if the offer was right. Um, was that fight ever close to being made, and, and did you really want that, or was that more of a, you know, something thrown out there to get some attention? No, 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 no. I, I definitely wanted that. I mean, not only that, but, I mean, I don't know, uh, Jeff, I know uh, Kimmel was just fighting. I didn't want to fight Kimmel because, like I said, my thing was I was so portrayed as the, the, the villain in the first fight. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Or, 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 let me stop you there. It's, it, no, he's not training Kimbo. He was King Mo. Oh, I'm sorry. I like it. Oh, I'm sorry. I like it. Kimbo. I'm sorry. My fault. No, well, no, I'm, no. I'm not Kimbo. Kimbo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I'm calling out like Kimbo's fight. This is what I wanted. Kimbo's fight. Because, like I said, the thing about it, going into the uh, first UFC, I, I was blindfolded. I mean, they they really used me in a way because, you know, I was a top-rated fighter, and I was going to fight, again, like I said, for a world title. And, uh, you know, when it came out, I thought I was supposed to portray as a guy who had no, no kind of stress. I hadn't lost in five years. But in saying that, um, I was trying to get Hoist, you know, trying to lure him back in because being at UFC for the last two years, I've learned a lot for his grappling and for his groundwork. So now I think my game's a lot more better, of course, a lot more better than it was in the beginning. And now I know how to do different things, like explore different moves. And I, I wouldn't allow Hoist to do the same thing he did the first time. So then once he decided not to do it, that's when I said with that, Kimbo's coming into boxing, and if he's coming into boxing, at least give me a shot to redeem myself by fighting him. And, and I guess, you know, I hadn't heard back from him. So yeah, that'd be a that'd be a good one for you. I think you know he, he's so. I mean, Kiyu and Kimbo, that'd be an interesting little fight there. What do you think of him as a boxer? I mean, you, you know, he wasn't. Yeah. You, know, you said he. Go ahead. I mean, you know, I, mean, I respect him. I mean, I respect every man who gets in the ring. And uh, like I said, I just think that uh, he doesn't have the, the experience I have. You know, for, for the, being a real fighter, I mean, he's got a couple of knockouts against you know some tomato cans, but. Boys, you know, being enough for uh, Olympia as part of the time. I've already fought five world champions, and I've been, you know, I mean, 10 miles away numerous times, so I know how to, you know, pace myself, I know how to, you know, take punches and also roll with punches. So, you know, they talk about how he's big, he's, he's strong. In boxing, that doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's how you fight. So I think I've got a lot more experience than he has for, you know, being a professional fighter. I've been, I've been fighting for the last 20 some years as a professional fighter. Right now, now right after your, uh, your UFC fights there, um, you know, then and then towards the end of your career, you know, it didn't go so well. Um, at what point, you know, did, did you really think, I mean, it's got to be hard for player, you know, having never stepped in the ring and probably never will, you know, and, and not being in tip-top shape. For both of you, you know, what? how do you know when it's time to get out there? And I know, Jeff, you know, you went out on, you know, on, a, on a winning note, but, but it didn't go so well for you. I mean, was it a, a point of, you know, necessity to get in there, you know, with, with you know, needing, needing the paycheck or, or just the desire to compete or, you know, what kept you going on when you know wasn't going so good at the end after such a good run for such a long time? Okay, Jeff, that's you first. Me, you go first. Go, all right. 
with, with me, what it was was, all right, what it was with me was, um, I guess, you know, when you started looking at it as a job. You know, growing up, I loved boxing so much, man. It was like I, I, I would eat, sleep, and drink boxing, you know. And uh, in doing so, I mean, I loved the sport. I loved uh, the crowd. I think once I started realizing it becoming a job, like a paycheck, that's when it's time to get out. You know, once we start saying, you know, dang, what am I, what, what am I, we start questioning and saying, why are you fighting this guy? You know, is it for the money? Is it for the, you know, the glory? What is it for, you know? So at that time, to the end of my career, I was taking a lot of dumb fights because uh, I became self-managed. And a lot of times, uh, after the UFC fight, basically, uh, I took uh, some wrong uh, turns where uh, I was off of, you know, quick money, some good, good money for some, uh, as a stepping stone, you know what I'm saying? So basically, I got used a lot to the end of my career. I won't blame the UFC for it, just that, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I knocked out the number of six guys in the world in my, like, my life fight. So that kind of uh, pushed me up in the ranking real high. What I should have did was just lay back and got the experience that I didn't. What I did was I kind of rushed to the title fight, and I kind of messed up when I did that. Then what about you, Jeff? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's ironic that, you know, basically what he says uh, is almost the same thing with me because basically I got to a point where I felt like I was prostituting myself solely because of my name. And so I was, it was easy for me to negotiate, you know, when they say, well, okay, we're going to give you 10000 I say, well, no, I'll give you fifteen, you know, and I didn't have no problem getting it. So, I mean, I started prostituting myself, and then I, and, and, and like you said, I started going to guys' backyards, and, you know, next thing I know, I would, I would get robbed because I was never a big puncher. So, and when you go in the guys' backyard, a lot of times you have to knock them out. So, I mean, and then I, and then I, you know, I took an honest look at myself in the mirror, and I said, I can't do this. I said, I ain't coming to boxing for this, you know. So, um, you know, I, um, I, at that time, Little Floyd was with top rank, so I talked to top rank about doing a, um, a farewell, a farewell card with me, Roger, and Floyd, and I retired that night. And, um, you know, and I already knew it in my own mind, you know, because, you know, boxing for me was never, boxing was never my first love. It was more of a hobby for me. So, I mean, it was easy for me to walk away from it. And, Art, you know, you, you got out of boxing, you retired. What did you do from there, and when did you get, and how did you end up getting involved back with, the, you know, the UFC gym? Well, well, it's funny because, uh, you know, again, like I said, um, you know, as a fighter, I don't know if you can read some of the stories they wrote on me, I started fighting because at the age of 12, I had my late son tried to molest me. And I, I needed some type of background because I know what my father had found out he was a guilty guy. So, um, anyway, this guy had a wife and a kid. It was, it was ironic that it happened right in my neighborhood. So when it happened, um, I started boxing. I, I never loved boxing. I've I, I grown to love it because uh, once I learned how to do it, I had some respect from everybody. So I was able to um, feed off of that. But once I uh, retired from boxing, uh, I was a pet for almost 15 to 20 years. And um, finally, uh, I went through a life and death situation a couple of years ago in St. Louis, and uh, my mom passed away. So once the gym that here opened up, I mean, it was like peanut butter and jelly, you know what I'm saying? I got her, and they were like, they, they, they took me under their wing because uh, they knew who I was. So it worked out great. But yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of weird, you know. The the one thing you're you know most known for is, is the UFC, which you know wasn't obviously a pleasant experience your first time, but but yeah, you know, like I said, later in life, you know, it, it turns around and becomes a positive thing for you. Yeah, you know, and the thing about it, you gotta say, you got all the glory, man, because you know, like I said, in doing so, um, you know, my life had changed around because um, I, I I I had a major heart attack about two years ago, man, and uh, so from stress and from what I was eating and what happened, I actually died. But in dying, uh, you know, I believe that the Lord Jesus brought me back, and in bringing me back, I mean, I had a vision in the whole the whole nine yards, man. But in bringing me back, I give him all the glory. So right now, I am going to ministry school, ministry school out here. But again, like I said, uh, I'm, I am employed by UFC, and it's like God just had everything set up for me. Well, uh, I just walked right into it. Uh, it's amazing. You've been through some uh, some uh, rough times there, so yeah, it's, it's great that things turn out for you. Um, you know, so you've been working a while with the with the MMA guys, uh, you know, in, in their boxing. So Jeff's getting more and more involved into it. So, so you know, what what tips would you have for Jeff as a, uh, you know, working with these guys? Well, you know, what? again, like I said, a lot of these guys, you know, they're so anxious because they want a lot of fight. I mean, a lot of these guys they teach me a lot. So we kind of bother them because they teach me how to how to how to, how to you know MMA or how to do the mixed martial arts thing. I'm teaching them out of boxing. Um, 
because again, I, I, my only thing I teach the you know the guys that are more experienced, but also I teach the newcomers to come in, you know, as a group. So in doing so, uh, you know, take your time and just have fun doing it. Again, uh, just re realize that uh, these guys, uh, you know, they're uh, they're ancient, and a lot of times they're making a lot of mistakes because you know they want to learn so fast, but. You know, but Jeff knows, and he's been around long enough. It's, just, it's like it's the same thing as it's playing a box, but it's just a different sport. And Jeff, uh, you know, like I said, you know, you've, you've been getting more and more involved with these guys. I mean, do you do you see yourself? I mean, I guess I've asked you this before, but as far as you know, is there any chance that that's the you know, I know they'll never replace it, but as far as getting more and more involved, do you think you ever become more involved in MMA than your, even our boxing? Um, I mean, I probably, you know, I mean, well, I mean, of course, with, with MMA, it's basically a situation of, I mean, because now boxers, I already know there's going to be so many boxers that get in contact with, with me for, you know, for boxing. I mean, I just had three guys come to the gym today that want that want to train with me, and I mean, every day I get a new person that wants to train with me in boxing on Facebook or something like that, you know, but with MMA, of course, I mean... Um, you know, it's it's more like um, a trainer for hire as opposed to, you know, it being something that, you know, is not my passion. But at the same time, it is my passion in what I do, what I can give to a fighter that is an MMA. You know, so, I mean, basically it's a situation in which, you know, when a, if a person calls me and says they, you know, they, they want me to help them with their stand-up, I mean, I'm there. I mean, and I won't even have to think twice about it because, I mean, I do have a passion to to help to help you know help fighters get better. Yeah, and he, like he, you know, the difference. I know you're close to King Mo, obviously, but not Kimbo, but King Mo. Um, but yeah, since since MMA involves so many more disciplines, do you, do you think that the bond that that can be there when when you're just training boxing, is, you know, it's not there with MMA because they have so many different coaches? No, I mean the that. That's just an individual thing. It doesn't matter about because every coach is different, you know. And with me, I don't care who, whoever I'm training. I create a bond with them, you know. And basically, I mean, I have a I have a very strong bond with with King Mo, and I have a very strong bond with with um with Roy, you know. I mean, and I mean with TJ and and Danny was a little bit different, you know, because they would just come to the gym and they would just they would go. You know, but with Roy, we sit down and we talk about life and stuff like that. And, and King Mo, I mean, basically, it's a situation, you know, it seems like I've known these guys for a long, long time. I mean, and, and they share stuff with me in their life that, you know, that they probably wouldn't share with just anyone. So, I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, I think that's just my personality, you know, as a person. And I like to get to know, you know, the person that I'm working with beyond just, them as being an athlete, but just as a person. All right, I think I'm back. I'm mean, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> hey, you want to sleep on this? I, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. My phone called out and disconnected me, so uh, <laughs> hope you were able to carry on without me. Um, you know, Art. The one thing I'd like to add, or you know, find out too about from you in the last couple of minutes here. How how are you received by the, the MMA community? That the, the current fighters that you get a chance to talk to. I mean, are they really respectful of the older guys. That you know, that, that competed. You know, the the pioneers of the sport. You know, it's so funny because you know, me coming up here was the point where they really, um, I mean, you'll see really under under their wing, and uh, meeting people like you know, I mean, they would have you know, of course, being in the UFC, they have uh, you know, different people come by the gym who. Uh, to, to, to sponsor him, and I, I remember meeting uh, um, what's his name, um, a couple of the big name guys who fought in the past. They come in, and it was like they they and they met me. They just threw me off because they were so excited about me me being one of the original fighters. It was like wow, man, I got a chance to meet Art one of those gym But once that name got with me, it was like kind of stuck because, like I said, um, <laughs> I, I didn't mean to, I, I didn't mean for it to happen. My whole thing was to basically suck a voice into. Uh, a good punch, but you know it didn't work out the right way. But it still worked out where, um, even to this day, I can uh, when people hear my name or, or see the name, you know, they're so excited about taking a picture with me about you know letting let people know that they met me. So it kind of worked out okay. 
you know, they, I was in high school at the time. I remember at the time, you know, we'd always run up to the to the video store. We'd rent the VHS tapes, you know, from the first couple, and we watched those things over and over. And, you know, the one thing, you know, I'm still a huge fan, but the, the one thing with, with the UFC that I kind of miss, the charm of the old one, is that now everybody's, you know, for the most part, is evolved. Everybody's cross-training everything. Everybody knows wrestling, jiu-jitsu, boxing, whatever. They all work on everything. It was kind of neat, you know, to see the first few when you had a boxer like you and, you know, a strict jiu-jitsu guy like, you know, Grace and, you know, pure wrestlers, you know, competing against each other. I mean, do you think that's, you know, hurt the charm of the sport at all, that everyone's so cross-trained now? You know what? I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of the guys, I mean, even when you see uh, Facebook or Twitter, a lot of the guys like the original one because, again, it was so new. I just think, you know, it's kind of funny when you look at the, uh, I don't know if you, if, if you remember the game Street Fighter way back in the day when uh, they had a video game out called Street Fighter where all these artists made yeah. each other. It's yeah. exactly what it, it was a real life Street Fighter, you know. I just think that uh, right. I was right. I had more chance to, show, to display my talent. I just don't mean I had enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I just I didn't have enough time to uh, learn some of the things I needed to learn to uh, display my talent because, like I said, uh, if they had Max Miller, like you know, probably Ken Shamrock or either um, somebody like Pat Smith, who was more of a boxer, then I had, right. as I had met right. Hoyt in the finals, it probably been you know probably been different, you know. But again, uh, I respect the Hoyt and all the fighters uh, in the UFC, but man. I mean, I think my house, these guys are, are tough, man. I mean, seriously, I mean, boxing, you know, we've got a chance to block and, and move and deal. You're only using, you know, two hands. They're using elbows, knees. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing how these guys can use their part of their body to win. Right. Did you feel a little set up in the first one? I mean, now, you know, it's kind of been known for a while that, you know, the first several UFCs were kind of designed to, you know, to make Hoist a star here in the States. So do you feel that you were a little, uh, a little sabotaged? Now, come on, come on, wink, wink. You know what I'm saying? Of course. You know what I mean? Like I said, they brought me in. Uh, you know, I mean, I, they kind of, they kind of you know, told me what would happen, but they didn't kind of like, you know. So if anybody going into that fight, I mean, and yeah, I respect Hoyt so much, but at the time, Hoyt was nervous. I mean, he was really nervous. I mean, he wouldn't even eyeball me. You know what I'm saying? And the fan is saying that nobody knew who I was. Because being a fighter outside of the, uh, outside of the MMA game, I mean, Ken Shabrock was there, Pat Smith was there, Hoyt was there. It was only eight guys, and then going to that tournament, I was only a legitimate boxer. I was ranking them seven in the world in the WBC, so you know I was going to fight a, t- a title fight. So I was really excited about, you know, it was like free money. It was like maybe I'm going to go and fight these guys with no gloves on. Are you serious? So it got to the point where um, it's a true story. We we're, were we're in the dressing room, and my um, my manager at the time were attorneys, and um, when they talked about how barbaric it was, I was the I was the third fighter of the night. We were seeing the first two fights. You know, Ken Cameron was there and Dave Frazier. And also we saw uh, 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 the one kick, kickboxing guy that got teeth knocked out. My manager, one of them, was, was literally back there crying. Seriously. He said, oh, I don't do it, man. It's too barbaric. They don't want you to get hurt. I was like, no. Nah. I said, well, I've already made a commitment. We'll do it. Because, you know, I, I figured I, I was going to be good to go out there and, and beat these guys easy. But when one came with the, well, with the kicking in my face and, you know, throwing me down the ground, even, even Jim Brown, the commentator, was like, you know, it was kind of unfair because, you know, I didn't get a chance to display my talent. So, again, um, the early ones are really, really just uh, uh, natural. I mean, you had a natural fighter, you have another natural fighter. And, and the outcome came out the way it was. Yeah, it's just, uh, we'll have to get, Jeff, I'm going to go over to Jeff's house here one of these uh, days and we're going to wrestle the old tapes and then and let him see how it was in the, in the beginning. You down for that, Jeff? Mm-hmm. Well, I ain't got no, I ain't got no, no VHS player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would cry. Yeah, I remember the old VHS. We're going to watch uh, yeah, USC 1 through 10. We can probably watch that on YouTube now. Uh, yeah, are we watch on YouTube. What's that? I said, yeah, we can watch it on YouTube. Well, Art, you know, I, I really appreciate you calling. It was great catching up to you, and it's great to hear that things are, you know, are going well for you. So many times you hear these guys that, you know, from the past that we all remember, things haven't turned out well. You, you know, it sounds like you know, you've had some difficulties, especially with your health, but it sounds like things are great now. So, you know, thanks so much for joining us and uh, letting us know how things are. And, and let our listeners know, you know, what, you know, how they can follow you on Twitter, uh, you know, Facebook, anything like that that you got going on. Uh, uh, well, I want to say first of all, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Uh, also, Jody, thank you for um, uh, allowing me to come over here and uh, you know, talk to you. Uh, I want to give praise to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ again for being alive. 
also want to say, um, if you're going to get a chance, you can YouTube some of my fights, man, because that was the real me. Back in the day, when you see YouTube some of my fights from back in the past, you can see me as a fighter instead of an MMA fighter. And you can follow me on Facebook at uh, Art Jimerson. All right. Well, uh, Art, you know, if, uh, thanks again. We really appreciate it. We'll get you back, hopefully, when you're getting ready to fight Kimbo. We'll, we'll see what we can do to, to help drum up some interest on that. Like right, Kimbo, not Kimbo, right? Not, like Kim, not, yeah, no, 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 I don't think Kim. you want to fight King Mo. I think, <laughs> I think you better stick to Kim Mo. I think. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, right, right. right. Jim. Hey, Jim. Like, well, I, I, I apologize, Jim. I apologize. <laughs> no, I was probably speaking a little too quick. Yeah, I, th I think you got a better shot at Kimbo. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'd love to see that. And, uh, and, and thanks so much for joining us, Art. Right, we'll get you back. I love you. Yeah. All right, all right. God bless you guys, man. All right, you too. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. All, right. all right. All right, that's going to about wrap up the show here. I uh, just got a minute or so left. Uh, Jeff, anything else you want to add? What's going on? Oh, tell us, you know, we got yep. two minutes left. Tell us what's up with Caviero here. Um. Well, right now, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm getting so many conflicting stories, but, I mean, at the same time, I mean, I know, I know Celestino and I know that Celestino, didn't put out no fight in Madden, didn't put him out no fight or anything. I just think that, you know, I know that some of the negotiations, you know, kind of got messed up because of the fact that they were talking about trying to put the fight on Telefatura. You know, and you don't pay nobody that kind of money fighting on no Telefatura. So, I right. mean, that was, I think that was one of the things that, that, that happened. And also, on July 20th, the, the, the original fight that was planned, there was no, there was, there wasn't even a date. There wasn't even a secure date for that fight. Nowhere. So you know, and I, I, I talked to Celestino yesterday up there at the gym. You know, and you know, for the Mars fight, you know, he's he's always pissed. You know, if some, you know, if there's a problem with a date or, or negotiation, he's pissed. But actually, he's seen more dejected. Like he's just, you know, he's really sad about it now. I mean, did you get the same sense that he just kind of bummed out that he can't get in there? Because I mean, he just turned 36. You know, time's running out. Oh yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, um. I mean, he, he seemed, of course he seemed dejected. I mean, we worked hard. We worked hard, and, and I mean, he was getting in great shape, you know, and, and his weight went down. And um, speaking of the devil, he just walked up. He just he just walked up. <laughs> my dear. Oh, I'll run out of time. We pull on here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> But yes, um, I think that, you know, it's just one of those things that, of course, he's dejected because of the fact that, you know, he was ready. We were, we were prepared to prepare for battle. So, you know, that happens, unfortunately. All right. Well, we got this little mail out here. Slap him on the phone or we'll get him to say something. Uh, he's on his own phone. What's that? Oh, he's on. Okay, never mind. He's on his own phone. All right, we'll wrap it up then. Uh, yeah, want to thanks again uh, to, to Brian Vera. Remember, he's got a fight coming up August 11th against Sergio Mora. And for sure, thanks to Art Jimerson. It was great catching up to him. Uh, UFC one legend, uh, you know, training out of there at, uh, you know, at the UFC gym in, in California there. Um, Jeff, anything else you got to add? Um, no, just um... – <laughs> I mean, no, nah, not really. To be honest. All right. Uh, well, folks, listen, check out the web website, uh, ProBoxingInsider.com and also ProMMAInsider.com for Jeff Mayweather, Brian Vera, and uh, Art Jimerson. We will catch you all next week. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Okay. Acaba de llegar a mi país. Ah.